everyone welcome from Neohaus Berlin where I'm working today so I'm spending my day here um, I was coming here in the morning and um, had lunch outside and then came back um, meeting a couple of people here so it's a nice chill out area today is rather quiet um, there are lots of new employees here as well and um, well they told me that during Christmas uh, time when I was actually not in Berlin anymore, so after the NEO um, opening event that was invite only, um, the days when they um, opened it to the public, they had between 2,000 and 3,000 visitors a day here. So that was record breaking, um, even better than the Copen, uh, sorry, the Oslo house. Um, but as I mentioned, right now it's rather um, not so busy. So uh, it's always having, you know, um, good and bad sides. Uh, for example, when they had so many visitors, they said it was hard to, you know, filter through and get the right people as leads for um, potential car buyers. Whereas um, now there might be more quality um, customers. And on top of that, already started with some local events. For example, I think yoga classes or some fitness classes. I've, I haven't been part of that, <laughs> so um, no idea. I'm just here. Uh, you know getting a sense and a feeling of how things are working and um, for me it's actually a nice place um, to you know be in the middle of the city and um, have a good work environment let's see going forward i might be here more often and um, then i can give you a better sense how things are developing over time now back to topic i want to talk about the potential of neo power in my other video um, i think one or two days ago I was talking about the opportunity of um, China's uh, build out of renewable energy and um, the challenges uh, along with that which are in the area of um, balancing the grid and also energy storage and so I just made a quick um, napkin calculation here with the current um, swapping network in China NIO has around 1300 um, battery swap stations each of them can hold uh, more than 10 batteries, but, but let's calculate here with this average of uh, 10 batteries. The later stations are now going to be double that, um, 21 for the next generation of swap stations. Um, but here, let's take 10 batteries on average and a 100 kilowatt hour battery size. I know this is rather on the high side, maybe the, the average would be rather 75 kilowatt hours. But as you know, in the future, it's also planned to release the 150 kilowatt hour battery. So um, again, for the sake of simplicity, we calculate here with 100 kilowatt hours. So that brings the total um, energy storage capacity of all of those battery swap stations in China currently to round about 1.3 gigawatt hour um, in total so um, this is um, yeah the quite remarkable size of this energy grid or network and storage capabilities of the battery swap stations and now what could be potential use cases well as you can see on this map those swap stations are distributed among the uh, along geographies mainly in dense urban uh, environments where swapping is required but also strategically um, having interconnections um, reaching to the far west of China um, to Tibet even and Sichuan province to Himalayas and even to um, yeah, the um, Xinjiang area here um, and what could possibly uh, be a use case is that in the theoretical event that um, battery swap stations are being used to discharge also the energy to the network, um, to the local grid, then um, this could actually um, power up to 43,000 homes theoretically if we can calculate with a, a household consumption of um, 30 kilowatt hour per day. So that's an average in the US. Um, and so this gives you just a sense of um, how this energy could be used. Um, I think in practice this would look much different. Of course you would not fully discharge all of the batteries um, in this entire network at the same point in time. Most of these batteries are going into new cars as uh, the cars require a full new battery, right? However, the potential is there with this stored capacity that this can help to, uh, well, 
be charged during times when there are peak hours of renewables spiking and then um, can be charged at a lower rate also and NEO can p um, s uh, send it back into the grid when um, the, the rates are higher for example during high usage um, in those urban centers and thereby making money on the difference on this arbitrage and potentially just thinking out loud here um, one could even think about the um, possibility that in the future NEO is going to sell battery swap stations to let's say local governments or um, even utility providers or uh, maybe companies that want first of all attract NEO users close by maybe they have something to sell um, but at the same time have a use case for such a charge discharge um, example here and then on the side it's also providing cars with um, fully charged batteries um, but of course much of this is just theoretical potential um, by now NEO is experimenting with some of these battery swap stations in China which are in projects that are already doing such kind of load balancing and charging discharging to the grid um, but that's not the regular um, um, application case for now however certainly has this potential and then in general uh, in this context of uh, China trying to expand their renewables this certainly has a, a good use case not only in China but possibly also in Europe where we have the similar um, context actually that is the case so that's it for now just a quick um, video about this topic thank you guys for watching see you in the next video